Motels are creepy places by nature. I always get a bad vibe when staying in an unfamiliar place, usually in the middle of nowhere and very poorly kept. Obviously, I know there are nice and very well-located motels, but to tell you the truth, they're in the minority. Anyway, one of the reasons I loathe motels so much is because I spent the worst night of my life in one of them. That night, I had met Clark, my Tinder date, with whom I had spent the night at a bar, and we had had a few too many drinks. Clark took me to a sleazy motel to end the night. The room was clean, but looked quite rustic. It had an old television attached to the wall, pointing to a double bed. To the side, there was a bathroom, and next to the bed, a piece of furniture with a bedside table. Interesting choice of place to spend the night, Clark. If you ran out of money, you would have agreed to let me pay for half of the dinner. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> you should appreciate places like this. You must admit they have their charm. <laughs> I have no doubt about that. I'm sure many serial killers see the charm. Is that why you brought me here? Are you going to murder me? I'm sorry, but that was always the plan. He said with a slow and seductive tone as we got face to face. But I can assure you, it will be worth it. I guess I can put that in my epitaph. As soon as I said that, we started kissing and threw ourselves onto the bed without stopping at any point. After a few minutes, both of us were on the bed, under the sheets. We were not fully undressed yet, but we were in our underwear, kissing. Suddenly, I heard a vibration, and I stopped kissing Clark. I think they're calling you. My phone is out of battery. Ignore them. I'm sure they're just from work. Oh, okay. As soon as we got close to kissing again, we heard knocks on the door. There was someone behind our door. Wow, really? For fuck's sake. Maybe it's someone lost or the owner of the motel. Let's ignore him. As if in response to this, the person knocked harder. Okay, I had it. I'm gonna see what the hell they want. Clark grabbed his pants and opened the door violently. Behind it, there was a long-haired man. He was wearing a black overcoat with a hood that he pulled down to speak. Hello, I'm sorry to bother you. Is this a bad time? The man spoke in a subtle, relaxed, almost innocent voice. At all times, he was smiling, but slightly, nothing too exaggerated. Yes, what do you want? I was walking by the rooms and I heard you. I thought I could come and say hello. What? Who the fuck are you? God. He said very slowly and creeped me out. Clark was also scared and took a few steps back, unable to react to what was happening. Then his cell phone rang again, which took him by surprise and caused him to turn around for a second. During that small moment, the man pulled out a bag and started choking him with all his might. I got up in my underwear and broke a glass over the man's head. Surprised, he realized Clark had taken the bag from his head. As soon as he did that, he saw the man coming at him with a knife and managed to dodge it, but got a big cut on his arm. Seeing his wound, Clark ran out of the room in desperation. The man just watched him go. He didn't look angry. He was disappointed. He then turned his head around and saw me, terrified. Oh, am I blocking your exit? I'm sorry. You can go. He then stepped aside, still holding the knife tightly in his hand. Drop the knife and get out of here. Close the door on your way out. I'm sorry. I, I can't do that. The man closed the door and stared at me with a somewhat sad face. That face only lasted a few seconds, since he instantly showed me his innocent smile again. You said I could leave! Get away from me! The man started to move, and I walked back even faster. I saw Clark's cell phone on the bedside table, and I backed away to grab it. Then I ran desperately to the bathroom. As I entered, I locked the door from the inside. The creepy man didn't run at any point. He just walked calmly toward me. In a panic, I tried to make a call, but the cell phone had a password. Fuck! On the other side of the bathroom, 
The man was banging on the door. Excuse me, could I come in? Why are you doing this to me? Leave me alone! Hey, you look angry. Is everything okay? Are you making fun of me? What the hell is your problem? This is for trying to kill you, isn't it? I'm sorry. It's not my fault. He made me do it. What the hell are you talking about? Who's making you kill me? God. He is here with me. I understand you can't see him. But rest assured, in a very short time, you too will see heaven. <laughs> Listen to me. I am a religious woman. I go to church every Sunday. This is not right. Killing is wrong, do you understand? Hey, stop crying. This is a good thing. I'm doing it for you. <laughs> I know, but he will forgive me. This is a part of something much bigger. It is the divine will. You should not resist. Do it for him. I feel that you understand me. We are forming a good bond. You shouldn't be so afraid. When you told me to go, were you really going to let me leave? Tell me the fucking truth. No, I was going to kill you. I'm sorry I lied to you. Would you let me in, please? You're still going to kill me? <laughs> yes. Can you unlock the door, please? Still crying. I just ignored him, and he kept patiently knocking on the door. A few seconds later, the phone rang again, and I answered quickly. Please, I need help! I'm trapped in a motel, and a man wants to kill me! Please, call 911! What? Who are you? Where is Clark? Clark and I were on a date. We were at a motel, and suddenly, a man came in. He managed to escape, but I'm locked in the bathroom. The man is outside. Please send someone quickly. What? You bitch. Clark is my husband. Fuck. I'm sorry, okay? I swear, I didn't know. I met him on the internet. I swear he told me he was single. Please, I don't want to die. Send someone. Clark's phone is blocked. Please, you have to believe me. I would never date a married man. Hello? Hello? Fuck, I know you're telling the truth. It's not the first time the bastard has done this. Listen, I don't know his password, but I'll call the police, okay? Thank you, thank you. You have no idea how much I appreciate it, thank you. The hotel where you are, does it have red doors and green windows? Yeah, how did you know that? This fucking son of a bitch. I know where you are. Stay there. I'll send help as soon as possible. Thank you! And honey, if in the future this happens to you again, you don't need to unlock a cell phone to call 911. After saying this, the woman ended the call. To my surprise, the man had stopped knocking on the door as soon as the call began. They're already contacting the police. They're coming right now. Please go away. On the other side of the door, I heard nothing. Are you still there? I didn't hear anything behind the door, but I wasn't going to take my chances and run away, so I just sat and waited for the police. We spent several minutes in silence. I could wait for hours, as long as someone was coming to rescue me. I thought about calling the police on my own. What if the girl hadn't done it? I turned the phone back on, but I heard voices coming from nearby. This is the only room I rented. They have to be here. Yes, there's more blood in here. Thank you, sir. Now go back and lock yourself in. You may be in danger here. From the way they were talking, I quickly assumed it was the police and the motel owner. So I yelled as loud as I could. I'm here! I'm here! Help! I heard many footsteps running in my direction, and in desperation, I took a chance and opened the door. As I did so, I feared that the voices were friends of the killer or other people who would want to harm me. But all of those doubts vanished when I saw the two uniformed men waiting for me. In tears, I hugged one of them. But when I raised my head, I saw him again. The man was standing at the end of the room in a blind spot for the policeman who had rushed in and didn't see him. He was unclothed, only in his boxers. His body was covered in the blood that fell from Clark's wound, and he was just standing there, 
with a smile on his face and the knife in his hand. I walked away from the officers. The man who tried to kill me, behind you! Both cops turned around in surprise, and in front of them, the man quickly walked toward the officers with the knife raised. Sir, stop right now, or we will shoot. When the man came even closer, both policemen shot him, and he fell to the floor. After being shot three times in the chest, the man, who was still smiling, stood up again, as if he felt nothing, and lunged at one of the policemen. Before he could stab him, his partner acted quickly and shot him again. But now, in the head, the man instantly died. A few minutes later, the ambulance and two other police cars had arrived. I was outside getting some air with a blanket over my body, waiting for the cops to take me away from the motel. As I watched the ambulance carry away the man's covered body, one of the policemen approached. Apparently, we found your date. He's safe. He ran down the road shirtless like a madman all night. Looks like he'll have a funny story to calm the waters with his wife. You all right, miss? A little better. He's dead, isn't he? Yes. They put him in an ambulance. He won't bother you anymore. I know. I, I just saw him. I don't even know why I asked. Don't worry. You just went through a very traumatizing situation. This man was a monster. I don't know any colleague that even with a bulletproof vest can get shot three times and still get up. He was probably under the effect of some kind of narcotic. Sorry. It was a complicated night for all of us. The important thing is that you are safe. We will get you out of here, okay? Yes. Thank you very much. After I got in the car, the cops started the engine to get us going. I looked back at the motel room from a distance and saw him again. Looking at me from the window with his creepy smile while waving a hand at me. I rubbed my eyes in shock at what I was seeing, but when I looked again, he was gone. As the car began to move, I just closed my eyes and settled into the passenger seat. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. I was driving my car in the middle of the night on a stranded highway surrounded by deep woods. It was raining slowly. The car wipers were moving after every few seconds and wiping the windshield clean. Holding the steering wheel with one hand, I tried to navigate to my location with Google Maps, but the network issues made it impossible. Where the frack am I? I had been driving for the last two hours, trying to find a place for the night, but luck was not in my favor. I tossed my phone onto the passenger seat, yelling, Damn it! I should have listened to Dad. I stopped the car under a tree and came out holding my phone. I tried moving it around, just in case it caught a signal, but, like I said, my luck was rotten that night. Great! No signal! What more? I wandered down the empty highway. I was feeling completely clueless when I heard leaves rustle behind me. Turning around, I said, <gasps> Who is that? Hello? A shadow moved quickly and vanished behind a big tree. The chirping crickets mixed with the howling coyotes made me realize I was not in my own neighborhood. I was in the middle of nowhere, and if someone could help me in this situation, it would be only myself. I drove for another half an hour and found a motel on the side of the road. The rain got heavier as I parked the car inside. There was no one in the reception. The motel looked old and rusty, but beggars can't be choosers, so I decided to stay the night anyway. I came out of the car with my backpack when I heard a slapping sound. Following the sound, I saw a two-story wooden house to the left of the motel. A big window on the first floor of the house could be seen with white curtains hanging on it. The light was still on, and I could see shadows of two people. A man and a woman were arguing. 
I could overhear their conversation. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. I know. I'm sorry for hurting you. I didn't mean to cheat on you. You never hurt me. You are my husband. I know how much you love me. I just couldn't believe this woman. I uttered to myself. Yeah, right. He slaps you and cheats on you because he loves you, dumb woman. Just then, the woman behind the curtain turned to the window. Feeling awkward and a bit startled, I quickly went inside the office. I was pretty sure that the woman saw me eavesdropping. After waiting there for five minutes, I could hear slow footsteps coming toward the motel reception. A woman walked into the office. Her face seemed pale, like she hadn't slept well in a while. She got behind the counter and gave me an eerie smile. Uh, sorry. Dry month. We rarely have guests at this time. No problem. I would like a room. Yes, of course. Single bed? Yeah, that'll do. She handed me the key of room number three and said, Here's your key. It's $35 a night. I gave her four $10 bills, saying, Keep the change, thanks. I was too tired to stop for a chat, so I headed straight to my room. I turned back to the house one last time, and the hair on the back of my neck stood up. The shadow of the husband could be seen through that curtain, and this time, he was facing the window. So the man was watching me now. What a bunch of weirdos. Spooked out by all this, I walked faster and got inside the room, closing the door behind me. The room looked old. The room's furniture included a table, two chairs, a lamp on the bedside, a jug of water on a stand, and a small wooden cupboard hanging on the wall. Dirty, dusty wallpapers were resting on the damp walls. Ugh, dry month it is. I changed into my pajamas and went to wash my face before going to bed. The washroom had a big mirror with water stains on it. The leaky faucet in the sink was creating a spooky tapping sound. As I turned back to the room, my stomach dropped. The room light was turned off. Looking at this invincible darkness outside the washroom, I realized someone came into my room. Drops of sweat appeared on my forehead. I slowly grabbed the metal toothbrush stand and said in a fumbling voice, Who, who, who is it? How the hell did you get in? Th this isn't funny, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you can see me, but I can see you. Oh my god! I ran to close the bathroom door, and heavy footsteps rushed at me. Before I could close the door, the woman behind the counter surfaced from that darkness, holding a sharp knife. What are you doing here? She smiled like a creep, and her left eye twitched. You think you can take my husband from me? He's mine, okay? Are you out of your mind, you psycho? Before I could get a hold of the situation, the woman charged me with the knife and ended up slashing my arm. I screamed in pain as blood came out from the deeply cut wound. Ah! <laughs> I'll keep cutting you like a pig until you die bleeding. Why are you doing this? Because he can't stop staring at your perfect bed-ready body. Look how he's watching you, standing there. The woman pointed at the corner of the dark bedroom while saying this. It made me feel sick. What the hell? Both of you, get out of this room right now before I call the cops. You won't get to call anyone. I promise, darling. No one is gonna come between you and me. The woman lunged at me with her knife, but before she could stab me, I hit her on the face with the metal toothbrush holder. I am no weakling, so the strike made her pass out right away. I couldn't see her husband because of the darkness, but I still yelled. I am calling the cops. You better stay right where you are, or I'll knock you out like your wife. He didn't answer or make a sound. I grabbed the woman's knife from the floor and came out of the bathroom. With trembling hands, I switched on the room lights, and to my shock, I found myself standing alone in the room. The husband was nowhere to be seen. 
Thinking he had escaped, I locked the door and called 911. The woman was still unconscious when the cops arrived. They took her away in an ambulance, and one cop came to me. Ma'am, how are you feeling now? I think her husband is hiding somewhere in the room. She told me he was watching me, that's, that's why she wanted to kill me. That's not possible, ma'am. Did you check the room? Oh, we don't need to check the room. We found her husband. Well, where is he? I don't see you handcuffing that peeping Tom. We found him dead upstairs, in that house. What? Yes, it seems like she murdered her husband a long time back. There's no way you could have seen or heard her husband. That guy has been dead for a month now. Then who talked in that man's voice? I have to get away from her. She is sleeping now. I just have to kill this man, and then I'm free. Free from my wife. Free for my life! <laughs> What do you mean I can't take care of him? I'm his father, Patricia. My dad was yelling at my mother, and I listened quietly. Really? So it was all you? Bullshit! That's it! I'm done with you! You can talk to my lawyer now. He kept the phone on the heavy dial a little forcefully, and then kicked on the post nearby out of anger. Then he started to calm down his anger by breathing heavily while closing his eyes. After a few seconds, he came back to the car. He got into the driver's seat. I said, Are you and Bobby having a fight? My dad looked at me with a sad face and said, Would you like to live with me for a while? Okay. Thanks, kiddo. So, we will spend the night in a motel, and then I'll get us on the first flight to Berlin tomorrow. Will mom be coming? Uh, maybe not this time. We were driving down the dark, empty highway. I kept staring at the bushy trees passing us by. Suddenly... My dad took a left, and we saw a red light blinking at some distance on the side of the road. He drove towards the sign and stopped. It was a motel. We got out of the car, and he said, Let's stay the night here. Tomorrow, we will drive to Grandpa's. It will be good for us to spend the summer with him. I yawned and nodded my head, saying yes. We started walking to the motel reception. An old man with a round, chubby face was sitting behind the counter. His one eye was poorly stitched from some recent accident. He looked up and down and then looked at me. We don't have rooms. Hey, come on. I have a son. I, I can't stay in the car. Help me out here. Saying this, my dad took out a $50 bill and put it on the counter. The man took it and handed us a room key. On that key was written, room number nine. My dad asked the man, is there any food? The vending machine is on the end of the corridor. With his annoyed reply, my dad and I started walking to our room. We stopped outside room 9. Unlocking it, my dad said, Luca, go lie down on the bed. I will be back with some snacks, okay? Yes, dad. I went inside, took off my jacket, and looked at the room. The room had separate beds, and I knew my dad had a habit of going to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I didn't want my sleep to get disrupted, so... I slept on the bed near the room door. I was half asleep when I heard the room door open. Thinking it's my dad, I said, I'm not hungry now, I need to sleep. I waited for him to answer back, but when five minutes went by and he still didn't say a word, I opened my eyes and got spooked. There was a woman sitting near my foot and watching me. I felt as if I was going to die of a heart attack. The way she gazed into my eyes, I felt my body paralyzing with fear. Her pale skin accompanied by blue veins peeking underneath them made her look horrible. Her glassy blue eyes looked dead. But when I noticed her neck, I almost peed the bed. Her long, black braided hair was tied to her neck like a hanging rope. She grinned at me, and I opened my mouth to scream. But... No voice came out. Mimicking my fear, she opened her mouth to scream too, but instead of a voice, her long, hanging tongue came out like a flapping dead bird. She started to choke herself with her own braid. Her eyes were bulging out. Her tongue was coming out. Her face started to turn blue when my dad entered and switched on the room light. As soon as the lights hit the floor, 
I found myself alone in that room. The woman was nowhere to be seen. Seeing me all freaked out, sitting on the bed while breathing heavily, he asked, Luca, what is it? I couldn't speak for a while. I just kept staring at him with my fearful eyes. My dad came close to me and said in a worried voice, Hey, hey, did you have a bad dream? She, she was sitting on the side of the bed and watching me. What? Who? Someone came into the room while I was gone? No, I opened my eyes and saw her. My dad checked the room, then the bathroom. But she was gone, vanished in thin air. I think you had a bad dream, kiddo. How did she look? Very bad. What do you mean by very bad? Her face was all blue, and her eyes were rolled up inside of her head. Her long braid was tied around her head. My dad's face changed to suspicion, and he slowly looked around the room. Then he looked back to me and said, Let's get some sleep. We ate the vending machine snacks and went to bed. I don't remember the time, but I woke up hearing a spine-chilling scream. Suddenly, the lights started to flicker, and the cupboard doors began to open and shut like crazy. I screamed out to my dad, who was watching all this paranormal stuff happen right in front of his eyes. What's happening, Dad? Nothing, just a power outage. Relax, kiddo. The lights flickered a few more times, and then the bulb exploded. The room went into complete darkness. The moonlight from the window helped us to see. Suddenly, a female <laughs> sobbing voice started to come from the corner of the room. A woman was crying in pain, horrible pain. Her cry was maddening and also scary at the same time. My dad said in a fumbled voice, Who... who are you? Where? Where are you, Emmy? Everywhere. <laughs> Suddenly, the room door slammed open and a gush of wind entered. Our eyes were stuck to the door, thinking the woman would come in from there. But instead, she came running from that dark corner. A scary-looking dead woman wearing a white dress. Her arms aimed for my neck. I screamed, and my dad grabbed me, and we both hugged each other, closing our eyes, waiting to die a horrible death. But suddenly, everything went silent. When we opened our eyes, the woman was gone. My dad didn't wait a single extra second. We packed our bags and came out. You can come out now, Wanda. <laughs> Free $50. Oh, God, these people are so stupid. Get ready for the third round in one night. <laughs> I'll check the special effects. You give them room eight this time. It'll be easier for me to travel through the secret doors. This way. <laughs> this way, gentlemen.